We'll call the meeting of the Lenore County Board of Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
resolution. We're ready for a motion. Ready for a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve resolution 2020-47, special use permit for James Rutledge, agriculturally related rental barn. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor made and seconded to consider the resolution 2020-47. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, voting. Commissioner Cause? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Shemke? Aye. And Commissioner Culberson? Aye. And I vote aye. Um, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, consider a motion to accept the proposal for the ARUP to conduct a feasibility study for the Eastern Gateway Bridge in the amount of not to exceed $100,000 and will recognize Bill. No. All right. <clears throat> this is the same request that's been before you for your consideration in the past. Um, previously, we had uh, discussed this in a work session discussed it in open session and then had a subsequent work session that we all attended uh, with the representatives from the city um, and the Port Authority and the LCDC all in attendance. Um, it is for a feasibility study from the Arab Group. Um, it's an eight-week study uh, to determine the uh, viability of a public-private partnership for an Eastern Gateway Bridge concept. At this point, I'll turn it over to you guys for any discussion. I would note, uh, we have, and I believe you guys, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I have received the letters from the LCDC and the Port Authority uh, regarding the matter. Uh, and, their, and their attentions, and the direction they'd like to see uh, the county move. Okay, and uh, we can address those letters, but I guess I'll... Go around the horn. Does any, anyone have any discussion items before we begin? Bill, I, just a, a clarification point. <clears throat> In a few of the meetings, uh, one concept I brought up was this uh, failing fast idea, and that there's a lot of um, projects in the world that you can spend a lot of time, energy, and money, and they don't move or never come to fruition. So my failing fast analogy was more about figuring out as quickly as possible how viable a project is uh, before you spend lots of uh, cycles and committees and uh, groups and stakeholders time. The <coughs> proposals in front of us, just to again to be clear, um, we believe that through these entities and contracting um, we'll be able to get to a decision point with potential private sector engagement or interest meaning this is a uh, deep enough analysis compared to the original kind of conceptual study that we did to, one, figure out what the interest is, and then, two, um, probably get some, you know, clarity as to uh, some of these other figures that have been assumed, um, again, whether it's environmental or this, that, and the other. I, I think there's this misunderstanding or confusion that by moving this step forward, we're automatically automatically committing to seven figure investments to move a product for to move a project forward that may or may not prove viable even after this next step is that a fair uh, well the assessment that I would say is that this is as fast as you're going to move and what this study will provide you is a, is a number uh, more than anything it's going to provide you a, uh, a number of that the private sector or this group is willing to invest into the project. At that point, uh, it'll be up to the county to determine whether they want to move <coughs> with the NEPA process, which is your seven-figure uh, study that's your environmental review process that's going to cost a lot of money and engage the FHWA and KDOT at that point. Uh, what this study will primarily provide you is that uh, private equity number that is... <coughs> they are interested or willing to invest if you uh, were to continue the project and get through the study. So there is no um, guaranteed future obligation by the county uh, of any uh, additional funds beyond this. Um, 
from the, this feasibility study. It'll be up to the county to review the feasibility study and the uh, basically the offer or the uh, amount that they are providing, willing to provide towards the project to determine whether or not the county wants to move forward. Uh, without that information, though, uh, it, we don't we don't know the viability of the private partnership, and it's an eight-week study. So, from a government perspective, I think it's uh, it's about as fast as you're going to move. A project like this that answers your question no it, it, it does I think uh, you know we've, we, we've had a lot of discussion and we've had multiple work sessions and I can't thank everybody that's been involved today I think uh, what's come out of most of that is um, there's interest and positivity if there's anything that's outside of those two um, feelings I think it's just wanting to make sure that this is the best project to open up you know uh, Leavenworth County and the cities within it and so I think while that's a fair question to figure out if it's the best project because there's been lots of other ones that have been brought up or have had interest this is one of the only ones I know that has any momentum behind it and has any private sector interest compared to some of the other projects that have been brought up so that would be my uh, only feedback in regards to some of those work sessions again I think most everybody has been positive interested you know wants to understand and learn more also from a um, larger geographic um, aspect is there anything that's better and uh, I think that's we should always be asking what other projects are out there and um, continue to try to push all things transportation forward but like I said I think between the uh, momentum level of interest private sector engagement having you know the East Coast, as an example, uh, looking for opportunities for these private-public partnerships. I think it changes this scenario substantially, and so are um, you know. It's it's. I've always maintained the position that hey, look, you know, we want to we want to try to push all things that we believe to be economic economic development projects via our economic development entities, which is the Port Authority and LCDC, and submit. Um, you know, project, projects just like any other uh, uh, municipality or private sector individual might do. But like I said, this one this one does definitely feel unique from the momentum and private sector interest as far as uh, timing. So those are my thoughts as far as the last several meetings. But I know we've got some people in the audience, too, that might have some thoughts. Well, to, uh, to state one thing about this process, I think one important thing that, that this has helped facilitate is... Uh, more open dialogue and uh, a lot of communication between the different entities here in the county, both the cities and the LCDC and the Port Authority. And so whether or not the, uh, the board decides to move forward to this or the subsequently a more regional study approach, I think that um, the discussions that we had in work session and the communications before and after with all these entities is, is uh, something that uh, can be built upon to um, generate momentum General uh, throughout the county, <coughs> project. So, I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, cooperation and input in, into this process because I think that's something that moving forward, whether it's with this process or other processes, I think it's important to uh, keep those dialogues open. Further discussion? And I'm all for a regional study to see you know which project would have the most merit, um, but I think the private sector involvement with this creates a unique window of opportunity. And I think uh, with a, any window, there's a timeline involved. And I can, nobody can guarantee that if we do this study, the project is gonna happen. But I can pretty much guarantee if we don't, the project won't happen. So I'd hate to miss that window of opportunity with the private sector by waiting too long. Other commissioners? Mr. Smith, did you have anything to add? No, I agree with Commissioner Colverson. That the project will definitely not happen without a study. Well, the only thing I would add is I think it's important that um, we provide leadership 
And part of providing leadership is that we say this is a project that we believe is important. And I understand that the Port Authority has agreed that the feasibility study should go forward, but it, we did get a little resistance or a little uh, reservations from the LCDC uh, in their letter. Um, my question would be, maybe to Mark, is I've only been on this board for a year and a half. The comments about regional transportation studies and and, and this uh, kind of an issue, what, what's the history of that? Have we been engaged to do transportation studies or regional uh, review of our transportation needs in the past? Or do you kind of know what, what that is? Well, we have not completed a regional transportation study, at least not in probably 20 years, if it's before that, I wouldn't know. Um, we brought this up when we started the land use plan. Actually, there were, uh, I think, four phases total, the land use, utilities, uh, stormwater, and transportation. And um, yeah, at that plan. Yeah, with the, with the comp plan, there could have been these other. So with, with that, um, the board at the time determined that to just move forward with the, the land use portion of the comp plan. Um, there was a, uh, there was, we do have several proposals actually that, that demonstrated what it would cost to do a comprehensive transportation plan, but at the time the commission uh, didn't have interest in funding that. Um, I, I think it makes sense that we do a comp plan for transportation, um, but it is, uh, it's not an eight week process. I mean, saw how long it took the land use plan the transportation plan will be at least that long probably longer because it requires a lot more um, studies of current transportation so they have to go out and do a lot of traffic analysis so um, while uh, I think it's it's a good thing to do um, it's a long-term commitment and um, I think it it would have to involve all of the communities because the transportation really you know we have connecting routes. The internal transportation of the cities is where most of the traffic is, other than those connecting routes. The main connecting routes in the, in the county are state ran, so not ours. So uh, our portion of it is probably very limited, actually. But it's so if not we did not follow that, uh, like had a transportation study, the length of time and the <coughs> amount of effort involved in that could potentially uh, preclude us from getting these private funds because of the way that this uh, process um, is. Uh, you, if if you if you delayed this until you did a until you completed a transportation study, you're talking two years. I'm that, that's a rough estimate, but I would guess it would take us two years to do a comprehensive transportation study for the county. By the time we engage a firm, we do the necessary meetings. You know, it, it's it's. A little bit similar to what we did with the comp plan so it's not a short process um, I think the the synergy that you're talking about the the energy behind this project would be gone by that time because these are investors they are looking at this they're looking for an area to put their money in today not two years from now that's what the feasibility study is about so we could be we could talk here about going to a two-pronged process of having pursuing the transportation study but still moving ahead on the the that was my idea. I'm not saying the regional study is a bad idea at all, but it, they can both happen simultaneously. And although it's important to have all the entities uh, in play, you know, and agreeing with this, um, if it weren't for Lansing's letter of support and uh, talking with them and making sure that they were on board with it, um, because all the property that we're talking about to make this happen sits either in Leavenworth County or Lansing City. So really those are the two main players. So as long as those two players are positive about this, then I don't see a reason to jeopardize our opportunity. Are there any other uh, commissioners that have further comments? Well, I would like to see us move forward with partnering with the other municipalities to, um, you know, look at developing a, a more comprehensive plan, the two-year route. And I don't, but I don't think that the, the costs associated with it, the burden of that 
should lie solely with the county. I think that if the interest is there, that we need to partner with it on, you know, with those entities to get that done. Good idea. Now, do you see, like I noticed on the, one of the letters that said maybe forming a task force that the county would kind of coordinate and then right. various cities and entities would appoint members? I think that would work. So how would we move ahead on that, Mark? Well, if you're asking how you form another committee, it's <laughs> fairly straightforward. Um, I think last time we had the conversation, uh, my thoughts on it were that you have the Port Authority. This this is, I think this falls within their purview. Um, you know, it's development and it's orderly development as part of it. I think that they also have representation of all of the, the large cities anyways on, their, on the Port Authority already. So um, I think that is, they have an avenue directly to come to us for funding, plus they have representation from the cities to go to those cities for funding when that time comes as well. So I, rather than forming another committee, I might suggest you task this with the Port Authority if they want to lead the way on it. I think that that discussion, though, came up in the last Port Authority meeting, if I'm not mistaken, and that they they didn't feel that the members yes. – am I correct – um, had the time or, you know, the, uh, the time to commit to running that, you know, uh, outside of their, what they do. Now, I'm now. Maybe, does, that, does Greg want to speak to that? No, I think there, and yeah, I definitely hear from Greg. I think there was some feedback as to, look, you know, we, we've got more resources between, you know, our public works team and, uh, our overlap and, and uh, uh, engagement with, like, say, a mark, for example, to help steward something like that forward. At the same time, I think we're all probably a little bit naive if we don't just think it's a cost that we're going to take on with a third party that's going to work with several engineers full-time over a very long period of time. So to use the comprehensive plan as an example, uh, there's going to be a group that's going to uh, put out a bid um, uh, we're going to get several proposals. It's likely going to cost three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. So, as far as resources and time, I guess is uh, everybody's just going to want to know who's going to pay for it. Um, that's why it didn't happen uh, when we did the comprehensive plan. So, you want to address uh, what your vision is of, of sure. what this task force would be? Or? Sure, uh, Greg Cause, I'm the chairman of Lumberth County Board of and we did have a fairly lengthy discussion um, over who would lead this um, transportation study group. Um, the Port Authority is more than willing to do it. Our concern is our staff doesn't have the expertise in transportation that the county staff does. And Bill will kill me here, but if uh, I guess we would like to probably, if you decide that we're the committee to do it, we would like to work with Bill and his team to be able to draw on some of his expertise of, you know, putting out RF, RFPs and, you know, getting under contract and everything, whoever the consulting engineer is to do it. Um, I don't think we have a problem going to the various cities, uh, requesting funding, uh, going, obviously going to the county, requesting funding and doing things like that. But, um, Feel that we probably don't have as good of expertise as what Bell's team does uh, to approach this. And that we also feel the county needs to be very, very involved and show leadership for this whole project. And we don't want to just be doing this on the side and then the county's over here doing something totally different. So we want the support of the Board of County Commissioners when we do this and the support of the county. Have a comment on that, Mark? No, I think that I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you do have to have somebody involved who, um, who who leads the way, which would be the whichever engineering firm that you end up contracting to to complete this. Um, as far as coordinating 
how you go about solicitation and whatnot, I think it probably makes sense that our staff has the expertise in that. Um, I, I mean more from a coordination standpoint, though, before you put another committee together that, to represent the communities, you already have that committee in the Port Authority, I think. Um, but, yeah, it, it would make sense that um, at least early on, coordinating how you solicit and, and whatnot, would, you would need some of our staff involved in that or one of the city's staffs, either way. I mean, I think it's important that all of the entities are involved, not just the county, but again, most of the transportation uh, occurs probably in this north um, east quadrant, most of the traffic that's localized anyway. So I think that it needs to be coordinated with all cities. And Ms. Ms. Be Bauer, clear, I'm adamantly against our 65th committee for what that's worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's kind of what I'm <clears throat> Ms. Bowder, who's on the city council, she represents us on Mark. Is that correct? She's our representative on the KCATA. Okay. So the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority. So. So you'd probably want to have, you know, her input or at least someone representing that. Yeah, but did. The well, maybe you K would appoint the yeah, we, larger group. Or yeah, the, we have the ability. The KCATA, is that right, KCATA? KCATA. Okay, just love the acronyms. It's really it's <laughs> uh, the fussing. Yeah, I, got I was going to say, but they're tasked with, you know, public transportation more than anything. So it's not new roads or connectivity. It's getting people from A to B. So I'm just saying, just, just to be clear like that, for... You know, I don't think those necessarily intersect. You might want to, if there was ever a new road to use, you might want to meet with them to tell them how to use it. And we might want to know where the bus stops. Too. Where, where a route could be. We're still working on where the bus where stops the bus actually are. Figured that out. Uh, I sort of think probably like KDOT and Mark, they need to have some involvement. I don't know if they have a member on our committee or not, but we definitely want to make sure that they recognize the study. For funding the right. And I think that's been part of the issue now is that they say we well, don't have a plan. Right. And so would the consensus be that we have them go back to their board and come up with a proposal to bring to us for this? What? You're talking about for the regional city? Yeah. I guess I'd like for you to come up with a proposal and direct us to because we want you to be the ultimate lead. Well, if, if you wanted, I mean, the comp plan was done fully by staff. I mean, it was, but we didn't do a comp plan inside the city limits of the, any of the cities. We just did the county area. That's why we led it. Um, you know, certainly staff has the capability of conducting this. It's the coordination issue that you need the committee for. Um, you know, I'm sure if, if Bill and I sat down to next week and I asked him to have a Transport a comprehensive transportation plan done in two years, we'd have one done and it would be done correctly. I have no doubt about it. But the the political side of this is where this committee is involved. So if, if the board wants a transportation plan done, we'll make sure it happens. If you want involvement by all of the communities, I think then you need to engage either a committee, which I'm not crazy about a new committee, when you have one that's already represents all the cities like the Port Authority, and there is some economic development associated with this, and I think the original kind of original mission of the Port Authority plays right into this, which is orderly development of the county. So I think this, I think this, that's why I think it fits with what a committee we already have. But uh, getting it done from, from the start line to the finish line, I'm very confident Bill can do that. Getting the support, getting the support that's needed, I think that's where the Port Authority comes into play. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, we could still, the Port Authority could, working with staff, um, come up with a proposal for engaging, um, you know, somebody to develop the comp plan or RFPs for that, assist with reviewing them. Let me say one thing real quick on that, though. Oh, so, I was going to say. One, one second, though, Bill. We have, we actually have several proposals. They're, they're old, but we could 
could pull those out. I think I still have them on the shelf over there. And maybe, like, go to have Bill attend a Port Authority th uh, meeting or something. Right. And I think you're still doing them Zoom or you're in person yet. Okay. Well, we can try to get that data out. It's a lot. But we can put that out to them and let them see what that proposal even looks like. Uh, we have costs for from two, I believe, two agencies. I think we got the costs on it. So you can – now, again, they're, that's three or four years old, so I don't – you know, but at least you get an idea of what the cost is going to be and what the proposals would look like. Um, if there's interest in the board, uh, I can have Bill um, do that, have a work session with the Port Authority and kind of uh, freshen up that information and then from there come back and see if that's if there's interest at that level to support this. Now are you saying a then work session with the Port Authority and the Board Bill, of County Commissioners? No, just yeah. this, Bill, Bill will take the information to him for the work session, Bill and his staff. So then from there... Uh, which I assume there will be support for that. But you'll get an idea what the cost is, and the cities can um, start talking about what what um, participation financially there might be and see if there's interest there before we go too much further. And if the, if the cities can, via the Port Authority can come back and say, yes, we, we are interested in financially supporting this project, then I can engage Bill in the developing an RFP and in that process but until we know that there's support financially um, there's not a lot of reason to start a new RFP process does that sound and in that case we wouldn't even have to make any formal action on that <coughs> not today I'll just if, if that's what you want then we can do that, is that good it that would be it will be after <laughs> the first of the year sometime because there's no way with the holidays and all of our other schedules we can get it done before right. the end of the year Bill and Greg does that sound Reasonable to you guys? Yeah, that's basically what I was going to stand up here and say was we'll take what, because we have a lot of old studies, I think there's some K7 studies, studies other studies in the area, and, and all the different studies that have previously been done individually, try to get a, a <coughs> assessment of what studies exist on an individual level, take the studies that, or that we, I think we've received some information, I haven't really reviewed it, but as part of the conference. But gather that information together. I can supply that to the Port Authority. Um, they can discuss with, with me and the cities um, kind of the scope of services that they would be interested in being included in an RFP. Uh, the RFP we can generate would be a narrative that describes the um, type of, of uh, results that we want to see from the study, uh, and then we can provide that to some firms through an RFP process um, and work with them to uh, give us a price analysis on those. Uh, in the meantime, the Port Authority will have the cost estimates, um, like Mark was uh, speaking of, uh, that they can internally discuss um, what portions after we kind of develop the scope that they are agreeable with, that we can, uh, they can have discussions with their councils uh, regarding what they're funding uh, of the study made. Yes, oh. you. Sounds perfect. Hey, Bill, could we? I think it was also asked, I don't remember if it was from Greg or another member of the uh, <clears throat> Port Authority, but there's been a K7 corridor study. I'm sure there's been several, uh, but there's been one done in the last decade. Uh, I don't know how old the one on 2440 was, but when we're compiling this information as far as proposals on, say, Leavenworth County, can we maybe try to find and just include those for informational purposes, if nothing else, what we currently have for 2440, what we currently have for K7? I think those are the only two that I'm aware of that any interest or investment has been made as far as studies go. But I would hope we'd include those. I would hope we, if you do move forward with the Eastern Gateway, I would hope that would be part of it. Well, sure. Um, the bypass that uh, I know John Bradford was pushing several years ago, anything on that I would hope would be part of it. Any of the results from the Centennial Bridge study. Uh, Highway 5. Not to replace Centennial Bridge, but obviously there's a lot of information there that's valuable that should go into the study. There's also, there's also K-32 studies that have been completed about expansions of, of K-32 to more of a superhighway type uh, two-lane. 
So there's, there's other studies out there that they may, I would probably contact uh, Leroy Cohen with KDOT and uh, put in requests or try to track down what studies. They have traffic studies at different intersections they have completed and all kinds of studies that probably have been done over the years. To yeah. Bill, one uh, thing I was going to ask you on that is if in talking to KDOT, I'm pretty sure there's a project that I've heard of that connects K10 and Olathe up to I-70, or there, there's some north-south bound to avoid, obviously, 435 and that nightmare that is uh, K10, 435, right there in Monexa. Uh, because that would seem like a natural extension point for us from an outer loop perspective, mm -hmm. right? I don't know where that is or when it's being done, but... I've seen a conceptual drawing of an outer loop that went around Lawrence, too, the continuation of K-10 mm -hmm. um, around Lawrence through I-70 that looped around into southwestern <coughs> Leavenworth County and went through portions of Jefferson County and then connected back in at I-70 and K-10 on the west side of Lawrence. So that I think KDOT has even done studies on that. There are all kinds of studies that have been done over the past two or three decades. Um, that could be included or could not be included, but uh, compiling what those studies may be, um, if you're going to do a you know a full analysis of the region, uh, trying to track down what studies have been previously done uh, is an important aspect of that. Yeah, I, I, the only reason I brought the only one is I don't think it's conceptual. Like I think it's happening. Like I just don't know when. But. Yeah. Well, it sounds like this is something. Once you have your work session with. Port Authority that, and you get all that information, then the, a work session with us on to bring us up to speed on all of that would be a good thing too down the road. Well, I know when KTA did that presentation last year, <clears throat> they had it in segments, and they said the first segment that would probably actually happen was the one I think you're talking about. I thought it was the East of Lawrence, so though. It, I thought, I it had the most, um, it had the highest feasibility score. Yeah, yeah. But it still was less than 10% feasibility, okay. I believe. That yeah, it's the 2050. Yeah. When, when Olathe has yes. yeah, the 2050. Those things intersect yeah. over. And it was going to dead end the fourth level. Yeah. Yes. But they were going to change that last yeah. leg. Yeah. Yeah. So they were going to change that. From that that dead end seems like um, we can get kind of bills started on that. Um, but uh, as far as today's discussion on the Eastern Gateway Bridge, um, yeah. But that addresses that. Now we can get back. I think, and, I, and this will be open discussion for everybody, but I think the Board of Commissioners is pretty committed to the fact that this is a great economic development uh, potential uh, game changer for Leavenworth County and that we are committed and we're, we're wanting to show leadership on this. And uh, Is there, Mr. Calderson, you want to? Yeah, this is exactly what I think LCDC has needed over the last 20 years to make their product viable was access, and this answers that problem, especially with the uh, industrial park on Eisenhower. This would be a big arrow point right to it. You know, when you make it five minutes from your customers, then your product becomes a lot more attractive. So you ready for a motion? Yeah. I uh, make a motion. We accept the proposal by AIRUP to conduct a feasibility study for Eastern Gateway Bridge in the amount not to exceed $100,000. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, is there further discussion? Further discussion? Commissioner Smith, did you have anything to add? Yes, Commissioner Smith. I was just uh, where were the funds going to come from? Would this be coming from any sales tax money or is it coming from somewhere else? I assume that this would come out of the sales tax fund. Okay. Yep. okay. Is there further discussion? Because to me, that makes the most sense for economic development. This well, is the definition of roads and economic development, both of them. So. And 
is it true, and I, I, I'm just trying to remember all the discussions because there's been a lot of discussions, but it, the, the law has been changed in Kansas to allow private investors to to invest in these type of uh, public-private partnerships, and we would be one of the first or cutting edge to, to access the funding, and, and any unnecessary delay could potentially move the investors on to other... Exactly right. It's it's a window of opportunity that's going to close. So. Well, it's obviously not an insignificant amount of money by any stretch. I think the reality is, um, you know, the the savings we have, like on the Eisenhower project, and there's some other elements of that. I hope we'll we'll talk we'll talk about. Um, you know, make makes it a little easier to have those discussions because you know, again, we're, we're coming in substantially under budget, and this is specifically what it's meant to do is to help create and further the economic development discussion. So, I think that uh, yeah, makes it a lot easier to move this project forward, and ultimately, um, we're gonna we're gonna move forward quickly and take advantage of uh, all of that interest that we have, and hopefully, determine some next steps in the. Nine week, ten week time frame, rather than ten month, ten year time frame. So, okay, sir. If there's no further discussion, we'll vote. Uh, Commissioner Cause. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Mr. Shimke. Aye. Mr. Culberson. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. So, uh, Thanks, Bill. Next thing is uh, consider a motion to engage outside legal counsel provided by Ballard and. Are for the Eastern Gateway Bridge project in the amount of not to exceed seventy-five thousand. So this is the uh, John Smolens firm that spoke to uh, you guys during the work session previously, and um, this is a not to exceed amount that would extend way into the NEPA process. So this is uh, this is to help start the process with uh, the KTA and KDOT. And start discussions of the uh, of the NEPA, but it is also uh, an evaluation of the feasibility study. So we would have an expert in the field of these. This this individual and this firm. This is their area of specialty, and so they would help. They would have an idea of who to contact and how to uh, work with the FHWA. Uh, hopefully, and so the, the not to exceed amount is not just for the period of feasibility study. If, if we find that the feasibility study is less than uh, what we would consider feasible, uh, then this not to exceed amount won't, won't be reached by any means. Uh, but if it is found to be feasible, this would cover some of those next step processes uh, that would be ongoing at the end of that eight week. Any questions? I can try to answer. Them. I have any questions, uh, Bill? No, I was just going to say. I think you know when we talk about the political aspect of this project, this is equally as important. Um, this is a way to clear some of the red tape to get a lot of the obstacles moved out of the way. <clears throat> I'd only, I'd only add that. The, you learn very quickly how important it is to get all of those stakeholders engaged and interested in a project. And what you probably don't want is uh, the Jeff and Chad show wandering around Washington, D.C., trying to engage our senators. And while we can do uh, a little bit of work with um, our adjacent counties um, and city officials, I think uh, when you start talking about the K dots, Mo dots, Mark, regional aspects, each state has their own transportation committee and group, all of which I won't even get into because it's beyond political and sickening. So you have to have the groups to understand how to navigate those waters. And Jeff and I sure did our best impersonation. But. And I think what we found out is until they think it's a good idea, you're not going to get anywhere. And Ballard and Spar know who they are to make this thing happen. You know how to swim in the swamp? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. 
And just a question quickly on that. Um, this firm has handled public-private partnerships in a number of different locations and has been successful, correct? Uh, yes. The most recently and most comparable to this project is they just completed the Lewis and Clark uh, Bridge in Indianapolis, which has included a bi-state agreement in multiple city and county jurisdictions. And so they, and it was, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the largest private uh, investment in a bridge structure such as this um, in the United States. So and they are well versed in this uh, arena of bi-state agreements and, and specifically in bridges that cross uh, from one jurisdiction into another state. Okay. And, uh, I guess we're ready for a motion. I uh, make a motion. We engage legal counsel provided by Ballard Spar for the Eastern Gateway Bridge project not to exceed seventy-five thousand dollars. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Commissioner uh, Smith, did you have anything to add? No. All right. Hearing no further discussion, voting. Commissioner Cause. Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Shimke? Aye. Mr. Culverson? Aye. Chair votes up. <coughs> Thanks, hey, Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate all your work on this bill. Thank you. Ready for me to move on to the next item? Yes. So the next item uh, is up for your consideration is a change order to the existing base contract uh, for ad alternate number two for the stoplight at the intersection of 20th Street and Eisenhower Road uh, during the construction of the Eisenhower Road project. Uh, this has been discussed multiple times previously. Uh, it is for $260,000. Uh, previously, the board had voted paid for half of that cost and uh, asked the cities to come in and uh, consider the uh, other half. Uh, they have not entered into an agreement at this time. Uh, I believe that Mr. Kramer is here today. Uh, you have questions for him, but uh, I will turn it over to you uh, for your discussion regarding this intersection and uh, the possible approval of the full cost of uh, yeah. As staff, do we is this something we would need to make a decision today on, or is this something that we have time? Well, you previously made a decision, um, and then you had a request from uh, the city of Leavenworth to um, reconsider that decision, which is to fully fund it. So, do you have to make a decision today? I mean, that's the board's prerogative. Um, if if you want to, uh, this light can be put in at any time. Obviously, it's going to be the project is to de is designed to take the light at any at some point in the future. So, do you have to make a decision today? Well, well, that's I'll the make a couple comments, and I know Vicky will will want to add, as she's been very clear. So, I think uh, I think there's a couple of things. One is not to rehash um, all of the meetings since the very beginning before this project ever went to bid. I think there's been some assumptions made along the way, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, I, I made it clear in one of the uh, last meetings where we actually approved um, or, or we selected the contractor doing the construction that, um, again, because we came in under bid and at the city's request, understanding that the tax dollars are being generated within the city as much as within the county, um, their council made it clear the direction that they want to take. You don't, nobody in this room wants to know what I think about stoplights, but it's not about what I think about stoplights. Um, it's ultimately working with our communities within. I'd much rather see us do so in collaboration rather than animosity, which I think has been done for many, many years and decades. So, um, again, I, I was the one that requested that it be brought back up today. I think there was just some differ, difference of opinion as to, again, how the original proposal was written. Um, you know the position the county could or should take relative to those savings I know that there are lots of other ways to allocate those funds at the same time um, we're only as good as what we commit to I think there's been lots of commitments both prior boards prior staff prior everyone uh, again the city the city wants it I can 
uh, whether I agree with it or not, I can support the city in their request and where they believe the growth is going to come. So. Any further comments? I just, I, I feel very strongly that we need to go ahead and pay for 100% of the traffic signal. And I believe that the discussions that we had earlier on regarding the, um, the amount of the awards is the con when we were discussing whether or not the award or the contract bid came in under budget that we basically said if it comes in under budget we'll go we basically indicated that we would pay 100 percent because it came in under budget which it did it also came in under not only did the project as a whole but even the traffic signal came in under the engineer's estimate and I believe that we need to uh, follow through with, with what we say we will do. How many intersections are on that segment of Eisenhower that we're redoing? Do you know? I mean, roughly. How many different intersections? Is there just one intersection in that segment? There's like four in there. There's a... There's a Six. Three? Three. Three. There's... Well, there's a business park that comes out on Eisenhower. Then there's um, 50. 155th would be right there, wouldn't it? So I'll just. Okay. Yeah, there, I mean, there are some that. There are some other ones, yeah. I didn't say I didn't. So I guess I'm counting the industrial park as a right. and, and some of the things that. And what I'm getting at is my question is there's three, there's, three, there's three intersections. Why aren't we putting a stoplight at all three of them? Because they're not major, there's access to get around from the business park around onto 20th Street. There are um, other ways of getting to any of the other. I, and I'm just, I'm just asking a question because what I was going off of was I assumed when they, in the original verbiage on the contract, it talked about the light at this particular intersection. Um, but it didn't say anything about the other two intersections. I assumed that somebody would go off of the traffic study when it got to the point of are we actually going to put lights in. So the traffic study said we don't need a light at the other two intersections. It also says we don't need a light at this intersection. So I'm just trying to wrestle with why, why aren't we using the traffic study? Well, traffic study said, said that we didn't need to do some of the improvements that we've done to roads currently. I mean, we have we have... Uh, improved roads that the tra that did not qualify for improvement based on traffic study, but we did so anyway. Yeah. So I think that that's kind of a, a to, to say, well, we're just going to count on traffic study. Well, then why did we make some of the improvements that we've made or even commit to them when they were not necessary based on traffic counts? Hey, Jeff, the good, the good news is the next two or three stoplights will be the city's responsibility because they're taking over control of the right. roadway. Right. So. so I have a question for the counselor. Um, do we have anything in writing in the whole process of this negotiation on Eisenhower? Is there anything in writing committing Leavenworth County to fund a stoplight at that intersection, notwithstanding what the... Uh, engineering report says that it's not necessarily required. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, there is an agreement between the city of Lansing, the city of Lumworth, and the county with respect to the improvement of Eisenhower Road. The agreement references necessary traffic signaling and signage as appropriate. There may be a difference of opinion uh, between the three parties as to what is appropriate at that intersection. The county is committed to the cost of the project, the improvement of the project. The city of Leavenworth then accepts maintenance responsibility for the uh, Eisenhower Road. I would suggest this. The language does not say a stoplight at 20th Street in Eisenhower. The agreement does state appropriate <coughs> necessary signaling and signage so I think it's really a policy decision on your part as to what constitutes appropriate signaling and signage at that intersection the city of Lemworth I will 
posit to say, obviously believes that that traffic signal, i.e. a stoplight, is necessary and appropriate. It's up to this board to determine how, which you feel is appropriate and necessary. And our current position is that we have agreed as a board to pay for half of the traffic light, and we're asking for cost sharing from the city. I believe that's what your previous motion was. And the intersection's uh, Lansing on one side, right? So, uh, Paul, did did you guys talk to Lansing at all about cost sharing? On you know when we offered to pay half, we just assumed Leavenworth would pay a quarter and Lansing would pay a quarter. Because the original intent of our motion was not to say no, we're not doing it. The original intent, of, I think it was my motion actually, was yeah, okay, we'll pay half. You guys pay half, and we'll get this thing done. The only conversation we've had with Lansing is their support of the original MOU and the support of the traffic signal, which they're on record on. But we did not have any discussions with Lansing on cost. Since the MOU states that the the full extent of the project would be paid for by the county. And their understanding that it was that it would be a traffic signal because I have spoken with them. Lansing. Yes. Okay. But you, you have talked to So the only people that have come out of this saying that this the intent was not to allow for a traffic signal is the county commission. Both of the cities believe that the understanding was that there would be a traffic signal. Well, that's because they're not paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and any kind of land, as you know, from real estate, land use agreements have to all be in writing. So <clears throat> it, just something that was said at a meeting does not constitute a agreement to pay I think I think we're likely to spend more time, energy, and probably money on lawsuits working through what is probably a pretty simple go forward. Not to mention, how much can we estimate we're saving by handing the road over to Leavenworth to be clear? Yeah. Right. Well, it's in the city limits, so we have to hand it over to them. I mean, that's not that's not a choice. It's in the city limits. Well, it's been in the city limits for how long? That was my point from the beginning. It's like, I don't know why the county's even involved in this in the beginning. It's been in the city limits for 15 years, probably. But it's a left pocket, right pocket thing. You know, it, it, the taxes came from the same people that are, that are in the city or out in the county. Did they? Did the county get the money or did the city get the money? Who's? Are you paying for it out of your left pocket or your right pocket? So my whole point is, yeah, let's get this thing done, you know, one way or, one way or the other. I just don't think that it's worth litigation. I don't think that it's worth creating hard feelings from either side, both with the city of Lansing or with the city of Leavenworth. I think that we're trying to improve those relationships, that we're trying to work in concert and in partnership with our municipalities throughout Absolutely. the county. Yeah, that, I think that's what the $5 million is. Uh, Right, and I understand that. You know. I, I just think that but when, when their understanding, when they leave something and the impression that they have completely differs from ours, I do not feel that it is in our best interest to engage in any further litigation over whether or not a DAP lane traffic signal should be put in at an intersection or not when the, the signal is put in, the maintenance is taken over by the city of Leavenworth. The road is put in. City of Leavenworth is taking over maintenance of the road. I mean, as as things begin to expand, as we begin to grow, as the city begins to grow, we have to be able to work and trust each other and work in partnership to get things done. And we don't want to end up in court to do it. Yeah. Well, we're not going to have litigation <laughs> unless we're sued. Well, well, I, do you work here too? I'm pretty sure that's what happens. I think well, I think this intersection has gotten way more attention than it should right. have from the beginning. Which is why we give, you know, put the traffic signal. I mean, it's not going to break the bank to pay for the traffic signal. Okay. So there was a previous motion that was paid in partial support, and it was passed. I requested that it be brought back up to see if it could get support to be fully funded. I think the cities have made their points clear. I think there's been representation made. I, for one, don't want to be like the state of Kansas or the federal government and say one thing and do another. Um, I think we got it half the way there last time. I'd like to see if we can get it all the way there. I'd, I'd like to move on because I start to joke that I see this happen all the time. I know what people make per hour. By the time you spend enough time on stuff, you actually are upside down. Doesn't really take very long on a lot of the squabbling and 
Pickering. And well, just happens. remember, every time we take money out of this pool, that takes money away from other projects that we could spend it on. I'm fully aware. And and we uh, have not been unfair to the city of Leavenworth because we said we're going to cost share. But it's up to the board. Is there a motion? Let's let's go ahead and get a motion, and we can have further discussion. I'll make a motion to consider the change order and contract agreement to add alternate number two to the stoplight intersection of 20th and Eisenhower during construction of Eisenhower Road. Uh, previously accepted low bid contract with King's Construction Company not to exceed $260,950. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion on the floor. Uh, further discussion. Uh, Commissioner Smith, we haven't heard from you. Uh, okay. Uh, on the couple projects that uh, we've just uh, scored real high on, 158th Street improvement uh, with KDOT, and then 155th Street through Baser on Midmark Regional Council, do we have any idea what the uh, match is going to be on them projects? Uh, Mark? So, uh Mr. Knoll is still here, uh, Commissioner Smith, and he said it's $1.4 million on 158th Street. Um, the Baser project, um, they haven't made an ask yet on that, but my understanding is that the unfunded portion is 2 to $3 million, depending upon what gets approved tomorrow. So so the unfunded portion of the Baser project is like $3.5 million, and that actually is a road that the county currently maintains. Correct. Yeah, because there's still a, a city of the third class, I believe. Yes. And it's a county route that runs through Baser. And also, uh, how much did we spend on the litigation from the city on the roundabout lawsuit? Commissioner Smith, this is uh, David Van Paris. Aside from my salary, it didn't cost you anything. I cannot speak to what the city of Leavenworth or Lansing spent for their independent legal counsel. Okay. I would suggest it, given the length of time that was spent on that litigation, it was not insubstantial. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion. Uh, Commissioner Smith, again, what's one more question? On these projects we were discussing, will we have uh, any uh, room to bond for any of these uh, matching uh, projects, match funds? Well, we do have some bond uh, authorization left. However, uh, most of that's committed towards projects that were already identified in the county's uh, uh, CIP. Um, so I don't, I don't know if we could, like 155th Street was not in our CIP, 158th Street was. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? And I think what Commissioner Smith is getting at, Paul, is part of the reason we said we'd pay half is we're trying to cover other costs, too. It's not like... We're saying we got the money, we just don't want to give it to you. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure the Leavenworth City understands that's what it's about. It's not about us just saying, no, we don't want to give you no money. You know, it's and we agree. So the county recently did a call for projects on a $2 million two-year thing that they're going to do. And we had submitted a pretty large one, uh, $500,000. But the county did that in the meantime from the time we started putting it together at the end. And we pulled out. And we didn't ask to submit anything else. We supported the Baser project through um, Mike McDonald and Mark. So we did not put in for that $2 million. Once our project was done, we said, thank you. Uh, that's the one we wanted. We're not going to try to fabricate a new one at the last minute. So let's have those funds go to the rest of the county. So we are not partaking in that $2 million at all. So if you want to talk about cost savings, the largest city in the county has not submitted or did submit but then pulled back and did not resubmit for that. And we said, let it go to the rest of the county, to Lansing, to Baser, and let's make this county better. So I think we have the same mentality of let's do everything here. Just one quick note, and I don't want to get into arguments. Like, we are, we're, our maintenance is going beyond the city limits. 
We've accepted maintenance on the county portion all the way out to County Road 5, including snow removal, including uh, the trail and all that kind of stuff, which I believe is past the end of the city limits. Um, and all those are also up for negotiation. There's city, uh, you don't have to just maintain what's in your city, but we're happy to do that. Um, but I, I just thank you for your consideration, but that's all. I don't have anything else to add. Lansing's not doing the maintenance on No, we're doing that. Um, okay. we, have, we have that. That's in the agreement with Lansing signed is to go all the way out to the county. We will take that part that's actually in the county. We'll okay. do snow removal, uh, treat it with ice and uh, with uh, sand and okay. calcium chloride and everything all the way out. Uh, yeah. Lemon stuff. Those were stops right after the branches, so we have we have quite a bit of county area that we're maintaining on that road. But Lansing goes almost all the way to five. So yeah, and we're taking all that. Way. Lansing doesn't have any of that. Okay. We, we agreed in that three-party agreement to uh, to do that portion. So further discussion. Hearing none, we'll vote. Uh, Commissioner Cause. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Shimke. Aye. Commissioner Culberson. Aye. And I'll vote no. Thank you all. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for coming, Paul. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kramer, I just want to yeah. um, I have something for you, and I just had a couple questions for you. You may not be prepared to answer them, but uh, the uh, mask ordinance that the city has adopted, does it make exceptions for... Um, <coughs> churches. There are no exceptions for uh, religion, for content based. Okay. the The case that I gave you is before the Tenth Circuit right now. Okay. It would indicate if uh, if you make the the ordinance you have does make exceptions if you are at a restaurant, you're allowed to remove your mask at a restaurant. Correct. I, I don't have it in front of me. I don't want to get. To well, I, I read it. It does. It makes exceptions. So when you're at a restaurant, you're allowed to remove your mask. No exceptions made for churches. The two ordinances in Leavenworth and Lansing are defective because they're discriminating against religious organizations. I'd like you to take this to your county council. I will do so. But I think they're very unconstitutional. Mike, I, I think the the councils are the ones that voted on it. So. I understand, but you know, when we're talking about constitutional rights of people, we have a lot of people contacting us, and I think it's our our constitutional rights, and I think at least that should be relayed to your yeah. leadership that there should be an exemption or exception for churches. I will have my city attorney take a look. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Paul, have a good one. And we'll move on to uh, Bill. Again, Bill. Well, final note on that. <laughs> Since it was approved, I will submit that to Kings uh, as a change order and we'll work through the process of uh, getting that added into the project. So, the final thing for your consideration today, uh, let me organize my. Uh, here we go. Is a new piece of equipment uh, the road department currently does not have. It is a brine extreme. Is a brine making system. And this specific one that was the low bid is a Brine Extreme. It was manufactured by Henderson Industries. Uh, currently, we are having calcium uh, chloride shipped in and applying it to uh, the roads, the paved roads, and during the winter events. Uh, the cost of the salt brine is approximately 10 cents per gallon uh, versus the cost uh, of the calcium chloride, which is approximately a dollar a gallon. So we're currently purchasing it. There is a so there would be a cost savings over time. Uh, we could put other chlorides into the uh, brine system if we feel that the temperatures are getting low enough, uh, and so they can be added. Uh, this system is automated, and so it, it is pretty much functional uh, without having a person sit there the entire time is making brine, and so that is the major advantage system. It is, uh, it is also an advantage that it does not have to be in a completely climate controlled environment where some of these uh, systems do need to be pretty much within a building. Which then you're making brine inside of a building that is often metal and uh, you usually have rust issues when it comes to that. And so not only is it uh, 
one of the lower price systems we looked at and the lowest of the bids. It is, uh, it is the system that is probably best suited for our environment and for a county application. With that, I'll turn it over. I know this is something that I believe uh, Commissioner Smith has discussed previously, clear back to when he was an employee of the county and not, and not an elected official. And so he may have some input that he'd like to add to this discussion. Mr. Smith? Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Knowles is absolutely right. Uh, first tried to buy one in 2009, got shot down. We bought a used one from KDOT in 2011 that wasn't, uh, never did get it to work. So, uh, this is something the county has needed for a very long time, uh, and it will pay for itself. Yeah, but I don't know how many gallons, just looking at the math, that we typically would consume on an annual basis, but I'm guessing the ROI is pretty quick. Well, we'll consume a lot more. So once we have this system in place and we have uh, the, the latest uh, dump truck bids, we did include a plastic sliding tank so we can apply it to larger areas uh, that the county previously has never done. And so a lot of times you will, what you'll see is... Uh, Pretty wet. You have side saddles on your sanders that you can so then it will spray the brine onto the salt and activate it as you're putting it down. And you can treat roads so they don't get that fro frost right on your road surface or the freezing around the road surface. So you have more of a slush layer that you can then remove it. So it is uh, pretty quick. But I think when we have a, a system making it, we will use it more generously. Right. So more applications. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. more of the material uh, to the, the only. Obstacle infrastructure wise is uh, at some point in the future, and we'll be discussing this with the, board, with the water district out there. Uh, we did recently purchase a meter, uh, but it still only has an inch and a half line capacity. There is a larger water line on the other side of the road, and so we probably will engage the water district in completing a boring. Uh, this does require a two inch or a certain amount of uh, water pressure in order to the system and, and an inch and a half line doesn't quite meet those specifications so we'll probably in, in lieu of putting a, a pressure booster or something like that or the line, uh, we probably will uh, bring the water line in across from, from the other side of the road but good luck with that yeah well, we have three water lines to choose from so. all motion on this issue uh, make a motion we approve bid pricing for one new salt brine making unit for road and bridge. Not to exceed $64,674. Is there a second? Second. Motion on the floor. Is there a further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, the voting, Commissioner Cox? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Schimke? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. And I vote aye. And is there additional public comment? Nobody signed up. Signed up. Uh, any any <laughs> comments from the commissioners? Millwood Bridge is open. Did you get that in the paper, John? <laughs> it was in the paper. What? Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see a picture of Jeff in front of it. It was in the paper. I didn't see a paper yet. Man. Good deal. Hallelujah. Yeah. And especially welcome back, Commissioner Smith. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to you being right back up here in the chair. Oh, I cannot wait to get back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going a little stir crazy? I bet your barn's cleaned out, isn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. You shouldn't have. Oh, you were actually sick. I was thinking of quarantining. Yeah. My my quarantine was a lot different than yours. Yeah. So, so are you feeling better? Absolutely. Good. Good deal. So... I just, uh, real quick updates for me, uh, last week attended the uh, Port Authority meeting. Again, want to thank uh, the Port Authority, LCDC, everybody that was uh, uh, involved on the call. Um, great discussions. I think there's a lot happening. I, like I uh, previously mentioned with the Eastern Gateway, there's there's a lot of support and there's you know also clear questions. Um, you know, again, everybody wants to make sure that you pick the absolute best project and you got to keep looking at projects to figure out the best and uh, that's why we talked about the regional transportation piece. So anyway, I want to thank all of them and their engagement. And then um, the last couple of weeks, I have continued to write it down, but forget to 
recognize um, Fire District 1 has uh, hired a new fire chief. So Chief Stackhouse, um, just want to welcome him to uh, the team and congratulate him and look forward to uh, meeting him. I think he's in the process of relocating. I can't remember when his uh, first day is, but um, exci excited to get that role filled. So what was that, John? He started this week. He started this week. Oh, the perfect time. That's all I had for me. Um, I had a, a couple things. Uh, uh, meeting with some folks on 158th the intersection traffic study, there was a fatality accident there a week ago, and we're having a meeting with them this afternoon to talk about what what citizens can do to input with KDOT. Uh, but you know, hopefully, we're going to make some real improvements with what we've seen. Uh, you know, the resources that they have already dedicated. Uh, other thing was our last week when we did discuss the mask, one thing that was brought up that we're leaving a recommendation that, that we should be proactive. I, I have gone on social media and tried to make some, some video showing that we should be involved. You know, it's, it's not just masks. It's washing your hands. It's sanitary practice. It's maintaining your social distance. And I think uh, it's important that we uh, show leadership that, that we do support those things. And and certainly, if you uh, uh, are in a high risk uh, a category, you know, you consider uh, changing your holiday plans and making modifications, and uh, hopefully, the vaccine will be coming. Yeah, I tried to do a very good job last week of uh, articulating, but I think at the end of the day, um, this board has made it clear multiple times that uh, we're in support of the recommendations. Clearly, there's some different thoughts as far as mandates. My, my position on the county is probably the same one I'd make at the state. You know, you don't tell 105 counties what to do in a single stroke of a brush. And I don't think telling 80,000 people, especially those that live in very different instances and in, uh, rurality, <laughs> uh, the exact same thing. I, I, you know, support the city of Leavenworth and the city of Lansing. And while, um, again, we may have differences of opinions from time to time, um, I'm, I'm sitting here in support of the uh, decisions that they made. And, the same goes when I uh, enter those stores or those cities. So, um, again, our, our position is not to make decisions for them. That's why there's local government. Our decision is the thing for Leavenworth County, and those are not all one and the same. So um, I didn't do a very good job of articulating that last week, probably because I was just really pissed. So yeah. my apologies. <laughs> is that a technical term? That is. That's a, that's a political <laughs> That's so, I, you know, and I don't have any problem with what the uh, cities have done. The only thing I do think is clearly from the, uh, the court decisions, they need to make an exception. Uh, Cedric County uh, carved out the, an exception for religious organizations and churches are, are carved out. The ordinances in the two cities are, uh, frankly, they're unconstitutional until they make those changes. So I, I hope they'll make those changes. So. Okay. I'll just add that um, just kind of an update because we didn't do it last time from uh, several weeks back. I did uh, um, participate in the conference call with the governor because Mark had sent a reminder and I went ahead and, and participated in that. I also participated in um, the annual meeting for the NAACP and um, workforce partnership meeting uh, via Zoom, all those via Zoom, and then did a, a Zoom meeting with rural Leavenworth County uh, Inc. last evening. And I log on and review the or view the city commission both for Lansing and Leavenworth weekly when they have their meetings. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, uh, one last thing, Mark, can you kind of update us on where the are the are you needing submissions on the CARES Act and what's the drop dead deadline on that and uh, that, um, the Last deadline week. still remains the 15th, but that, uh, December 15th, but that is um, like money spent. That's not requests. That's money spent. Everything has to be for outside organizations, whether it be schools, cities, or uh, some of these uh, other organizations we've provided grants to. The money has to be spent by the 15th. Right. So that, 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 that date has not changed. So that's just a reminder to everybody, uh, you know, Did you there's a that? deadline. <laughs> go, go and it's money. not a flexible deadline. No, that one is not. So is there a motion to adjourn? 
So moved. Second. Voting, Commissioner Cause? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Schimke? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you very much.